So my name is uh, Ivo Zandhuis. I'm a, a, a fellow at the International Institute of Social History and a freelance consultant in uh, cultural heritage uh, metadata things. And I was hired by uh, a consortium of um, uh, three institutes, um, the Van Gogh Museum in Amsterdam and the Netherlands Institutes of uh, Art History and the Krilla Miller Museum all uh, joining forces to create a one website on the work of Vincent van Gogh. And uh, the project was called the Van Gogh Worldwide Project. Um, so the task was to create a website on its work, on his work and uh, uh, providing uh, professional information as much as possible, as precise as possible for uh, uh, professionals professional art historians and curators uh, 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 interested in um, Van Gogh's work. Uh, so we wanted to present high level data, uh, high quality data, and we wanted to create a search engine that, that, that would find an object uh, precisely both full text and with the facets that we introduce on the website. Um, therefore, we, had to we wanted to collect data from uh, the institutes that collected these artworks uh, by Van Gogh um, and collect data on the artworks itself, obviously, then the exhibitions, the literature uh, where this work, uh, these works were mentioned, uh, its provenance and technical research like pictures of ranking lights or x-rays or reports on um, uh, investigations that were done in a technical sense. In an earlier stage of the uh, uh, program, we were advised to use linked art, to study linked art as the, the thing to use to exchange the data into, uh, into our platform. So the, um, the uh, consortium hired three companies combining efforts to create the, the, the website and Spink was the center piece in this where they created a uh, they created the search engine and uh, they're specialists in linked data so they know what they're doing in that sense uh, collect all the data and create one api for uh, limon groen to create one website on top of that designed by pure pixel um, and uh, last month we introduced the website, we launched it and uh, the Van Gogh Worldwide.org um, website was launched and obviously we got a lot of attention in the, at least in the Netherlands and around. Um, um, and uh, but the, the, the main thing that uh, in, was interested in our idea was to the use of the linked art uh, model that we wanted to use. Um, how this, the, the, so there were six, 16, 17 participants uh, eventually in the Netherlands that participated in uh, providing data and they provided the data in, 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 in different ways. So um, the Van Gogh Museum it, uh, itself had a, um, a programmer that was able to program an export from their uh, collection management database into linked art that could be provided to uh, Spink to put in the in the in the search engine, and uh, obviously the Rijks machine was able to do that as well. And so we, uh, th there was no problem there. We could just say we want linked art. They said, okay, that's fine, and then created the linked art, and, um, and that was it. Uh, that was not the case for all uh, institutions, obviously. Um, uh, three of them, uh, I was able to help to create the linked data for them. Um, at least they exported it, export that from their databases, and I helped to create um, uh, uh, the, the software to do that. Uh, so I'm not a software developer, but I helped the uh, software developers that were uh, involved in, in these projects to do this and, and checking whether they uh, were using the linked art uh, specifications correctly and whether it was linked linked data um, uh, validating in all kinds of RDF validators. Um, 
four museums were not able to deliver data uh, as linked art at all. Uh, so we asked them to give us a, 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 an export from their collection management system as a file and they sent it us with email or whatever. And then we created the linked art for them and to put it in the system. And a lot, last but not least, there were several institutes with only one or two um, artworks that we um, asked to deliver the data. So they sent us an email with the data and we entered that data into the, the, the National Art Register at the Netherlands Institute for Art History. Uh, and from there on, we could export it into linked art, obviously. So uh, this way we could have um, over a thousand, 1100 uh, artworks by Van Gogh uh, um, from the collection management systems uh, of 17 institutes. Two institutes were able to provide us with a Sparkle endpoint even. So um, we were not able to use that in this stage of the project, but uh, my personal endeavor is to, to, uh, to help them create, uh, to expand that and, and, and use that as, a, as an endpoint to, to extract data from their, from their uh, environment and then put it in our system. So what did we learn during during the um, during the way we we had some we we constructed some uh, some ideas on how to do this and um, and, and describe that in a documentation. Um, we were very uh, uh, happy to have Link Arts. Um, it helped us a lot because we didn't have to reinvent the wheel. Uh, obviously, we could have chosen to build our own ontology. We didn't, uh, thank God. And um, um, we could have used uh, CDUX CRM purely, and then, but then had to think about how to use that uh, ontology. So Linked Art helped us uh, to communicate how we wanted to have the data and, and, and think about the proper constructions to uh, to get it. Um, we learned that most of the database uh, had the right information in there. So, uh, if I a wild guess, but about eighty percent of the data and the data structures in the database was enough to convert it into linked data, into linked art, and um, so we had to add some. But then the amount of artworks at least in the uh, non-big uh, museums were fairly small. So we could ask them to put extra in effort in creating more links into their uh, collection management system to export it to link art from there. Um, no museum was able to provide us with linked uh, link, uh, JSON LD. So uh, all the systems were based on a uh, on a fairly old fashioned XML based web API. So they could um, they could transform their XML export into ADF XML that, that with an XSLT that was a, a, a technique that they knew and that they could uh, use uh, to uh, create the linked art. So therefore, uh, uh, I had to construct ADF XML examples from all the patterns that we wanted to introduce in, in, our, in our system. Um, but then from there on, it, uh, it, they, uh, they could do their work. Um, following the requirements of the website, we had to introduce some additional requirements and, um, and we introduced some relaxations in the, in the, from the point of view of linked art as well. And in the end, we needed a validating service. So we could ask somebody to create linked art and then upload it to, on a website and validate the information and see whether it, con it conformed, it was compliant to the ideas we had on uh, uh, the requirements and relaxations that we had. And we based that on Shekel, so it's not, it, it could be more elaborate than it is now. So maybe we 
we could expand that in the future. So what data requirements and relaxations did we need in, uh, in uh, Link Art for now? Um, we wanted to be sure that we uh, spoke about the same uh, Van Gogh artwork. So therefore we introduced our own uh, standardized URI for every work that was catalogued in, its, uh, in, in Van Gogh's oeuvre catalog. And you could, and, and we asked everybody to, to link uh, their work to this uh, canonical um, Van Gogh worldwide URI that we introduced. And we used the RDFC also uh, um, uh, property to do that. Uh, you had to, uh, to, do, uh, to introduce your current owner property, otherwise we couldn't see from which institute that your da the data was uh, coming. And we wanted to present that on the website, obviously. So we needed an English title, otherwise you, you could not build an English, um, an English website. And, uh, and you needed a production event with artist date and place. And place was uh, uh, pretty important because we uh, based the uh, facet the filtering on of, of the periods in the work of Van Gogh on the place. And it turned out that a lot of the museums did not register that in their collection management system. So I had to introduce that. And uh, we wanted to have an image. Uh, some of them were sent to us uh, uh, by WeTransfer, others were available online, but never in the IIIF format that we wanted. Uh, never, I guess. And then most of the things we didn't. Um, we did with some extra uh, additional concepts for typing uh, um, what kind of a session number was used. So we had these, there, there are two important over catalogs and the numbering in those systems we wanted to include. So we needed to have, and we must, uh, we, uh, we had to, uh, to distinguish those two and therefore introduce those two uh, typing concepts. Um, it turned out that one of the partners uh, was not correctly uh, added in the ULAN uh, uh, database of the Getty, and that was one of the triggers to discuss whether we should use uh, a ULAN uh, as a authority file for persons and institutions. And um, eventually we ch chose to use the uh, RKD artist uh, authority file, which was from the National Institute of Art History in the Netherlands, uh, because we could introduce all kinds of persons and institutions in there uh, uh, within 10 minutes and then uh, add it to the website. That, uh, that was a more convenient way to work and we could have more precise uh, information on, uh, uh, on persons and institutions that way. Um, we used obviously the AAT and the TGN terms for uh, other things in the linked R data, but then we allowed indirect linking. So it could be that a institute had its own URI uh, to, um, to link a concept to a, an, an artwork, and then we could, uh, and, and then we allowed, they, said, they could say this URI in their own system was uh, had a SCOS exact match uh, uh, a relation with a AAT or TGN uh, concept, and then uh, uh, things went well. Um, we had to decide that people were not allowed to use blank notes. Sometimes people introduced the same exhibition uh, to an artwork with a blank note, and at that point, we could not see that those two exhibitions were the same exhibition anymore. So we uh, asked them to create uh, uh, real URIs, no blank notes for those exhibitions, and then could uh, see that those two paintings were on the same exhibition. Um, Hi, I would just to let you know, you've got a couple minutes left. Okay, so that's only two slides, so that's okay, thanks. Um, 
Yeah, so we had to explain our uh, participants to use the thesauri. Uh, uh, artist was mainly introduced in the most in, in most systems I encountered during this project uh, already. So that was one important thing. But then AAT and TGN were uh, less introduced there. But in the end, they got it. They knew why they had to do this. Uh, uh, I explained and uh, uh, they all were very uh, enthusiastic to introduce that only for the seven or eight uh, Van Goghs uh, first, but then maybe they, they'll they go uh, about and do the rest as well. Um, I didn't convince them to put the time into their collection management system to comply uh, to the existing daytime uh, data type. Uh, so we I had to construct uh, um, Date, XSD date time uh, with the XSLT that we uh, that, that we made, and uh, I find that very. Uh, I, I'd rather have that in the system, uh, and not uh, add uh, something like that into in the in the code. And uh, last but not least, we have and we had a lot of discussion about the standardized vocabulary. So the Yulan Akade artist discussion was one of them. Um, uh, and then we had to decide which other authority file we had to trust, if not the um, Getty vocabulary, if, if we found that the Getty vocabulary would not be sufficient you know, for our needs. Um, uh, so act the artist is one of them, but then again, I don't think we could convince all museums around the world to introduce actually artists uh, URIs in that system. So, so then we have to uh, uh, trust on the ULAN uh, URIs anyway. So future plans, obviously um, we, we learned that some of the linked art patterns are changed, were changed during the project. So we have to get back to that and then uh, uh, change the, um, the, the patterns uh, especially provenance turned out to be different now than it was when we started. Um, we want to connect more museums live as a lot of the museums now start uh, send us export files and we want to hook them up live. And, and I guess it, it's called Van Gogh Worldwide, but it's only Dutch museums now. So obviously we want other museums around the world to uh, hook up and provide their data in linked art. And, and, and join in. Um, uh, at this point, we don't align uh, exhibitions and literature. Uh, so do we, we, we want to have, so, so different institutions could, could refer to the same exhibition with a different URI, so we have to align those. And then again, uh, find a authority file to, uh, to, to find the link. And, uh, the uh, IIIF is, is not very implemented yet, in, in the Netherlands at least. So that's one thing that we want to encourage and use as well. So that was the things I wanted to say. Thanks for your time, your interest. <laughs>